Uh, welcome once again to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, an integrative holistic psychiatric facility located outside of Del Monte, Pennsylvania. My name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist and I am joined by one of my colleagues. My name is Davida. I'm a PA student from Chatham University. We're so glad to have you today. So glad to have you join us and meet our, meet our audience. And as everyone who has been a follower of this program knows, what we try to do is bring something into your life that you can incorporate it to make it just even a little bit better. And sometimes we're looking for this much better. However, quite often this much does well. So, uh, not to give time or clock time to things, Davida. However, we recently went through a calendar year, okay? So in a calendar year, particularly what some people call New Year's Day, people have a tendency to make resolutions. resolutions. And what would resolutions be, Davida? Uh, it could be anything from wanting to run a 5K, mm -hmm. could climb Mount Everest, mm -hmm. you could lose some weight. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, I think that resolutions so are when you're trying to force a result uh, which becomes an issue because you're trying to force the circumstances of your life to align with your goals. Mm, well said, well done. So what we try to help people do is understand the difference between resolutions and intentions. So if you could give uh, your interpretation of what an intention is. Sure. So the way that they differ is a resolution the definition means to solve something, and there isn't necessarily anything that you need to solve to fix uh, when it comes to your life. So intentions are a goal, a plan, or an idea. It's right? something that you come up with uh, that you want to create, something that is in line with the vision of yourself that you want to be. And intentions, resolutions often involve words like I need to, I must, I have to. Mm -hmm. uh, could you say a little bit about this? Because I believe that they're included in most people's vocabulary, Davida. Yeah, I, I think those words are self-defeating. So uh, using those words sets you up to uh, feel negatively about where you are right now. Uh, intentions avoid those words. So I need to, I must, I have to, I should, and I can't. Um, and that's important because, as you say, with abracadabra, that means what I speak, I create. So what you speak to yourself, you will create for yourself. Stay there for just a moment. So you're telling me that you can make magic? I think so. In your own mind? Wow. Sure. So have you ever made magic in your life, Davida? I think so. Okay, great. So one of the ideas about resolutions do not give you choices, do they? No. We'll use the shoulds, the have tos, I need to. You take away the choices in your life. And actually, so if I'm saying I have to lose 50 pounds and in six months that if I do not, that, that kind of means I fail. Right. That I'm a failure. And those type of those type of setting up unrealistic expectations. So much of the anxiety, much of the worry, and much of the concern and the fear that we have in our lives is trying to live up to unrealistic expectations that we set for ourselves or unrealistic expectations that others put on us. And quite often there's so much unrealistic expectations others put on us. Could you help me understand why we put them on ourselves? Sure. Uh, I think that it's forced by the society that we live in. It's not necessarily a good way to go about your life, especially not in the new year. If you want to think positive, be positive, and be happy, then putting those, uh, putting those restrictions. Have you ever met someone in, let's say, December of the year and says, on January 1st, I'm going to do this, so da 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 da. Yes. So have you ever said to someone, well, how about right now? No, I haven't. How about right now? Could we start right now? So perhaps ever going out there, uh, and as you know, we're all about mindfulness, we're all about being here, right here and right now. So my suggestion is when somebody brings that up to you, I'm going to start on the first of the year, you could ask them where are you at. And of course, the followers of this program know the answer could possibly be right here. And the answer to what time is it, if you could ask a friend, where are you at, what time is it? Well, the answer of course is right now, and you could ask your friend, what other time could it possibly be than right now? 
So what we're doing is we're talking about making choices, are we not? We are. So have you met many people that just aren't satisfied with their life at all? Oh, plenty. And we want to remember that our, life's, our life is made up of choices. Okay? And if you're dissatisfied with your life, David, I would suggest that you start making better choices. So let's say that uh, I, I want to make an intention. Okay, let's say that I have an intention to spend some quiet time with myself every day. I have an intention to spend some quiet time with myself every day. Could you help me, could you help me go through the steps on how to set an intention, please? Sure. So you've already chosen what your intention will be. So at this point, you want to quiet your mind, center yourself, listen to your breathing. In your mind, you want to frame the intention. Now, say your intention out loud, please. I have an intention and a desire to spend some alone time with myself each day. Okay, so if you want to really cement that intention into your brain, the best way is to connect it with a strong emotion. So if you could say the intention or to yourself in your mind and then laugh out loud. <laughs> oh, I have an intention to spend more time with myself, <laughs> and uh, I feel better already. I feel better already. So when we talk about uh, we talk about repetitive action, do we not? We talk about repeating. So when you were young, your parents would give spelling words to you. Suspect. Okay, so the first time you were able to spell green, did, 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 did they clap their hands and they say, "Great, David has got it. We'll never ask have to ask her how to spell green again." No. No. Never so one of the other things is when you did your multiplication tables, when someone would say, "David, what is three times three? What would your answer be?" Nine. Nine, of course. So and did they just say, "Well, she's got that. We'll never go over that again." They didn't. No, I it's, wish it's, they had. <laughs> it's repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. So what we're trying to do is set up new neural pathways inside your brain. We're trying to help individuals do some cognitive restructuring. And by taking the type of exercise that Davida just showed us, what we're what we're doing is that cognitive restructuring. We're doing that positive self validation. We're doing that reframing in your mind, envisioning it. Much like much like sports psychologists. Do with, with, with especially baseball players when they have envision at the bat, envision the ball coming in, envision them holding the bat, envision the swing. It, uh, it, it's a great deal of help. So tell me, tell me some of the resolutions that you've set in the past. I had one a few years ago to run a 5K. Uh, that went poorly, but I did get healthier that year, which I think would have been an appropriate intention. I think the goal was to be healthy, which is why I wanted to run a 5K. Mm -hmm. That might not have worked out so well, but I'm proud of what it turned into. Mm -hmm. And one of what was so? What was your motivation for setting that goal, ambition? What was your motivation? Uh, ultimately, to better myself. Mm -hmm. So ideally, what we want to do when we set an intention versus a resolution, we want to ask what what motive what mo what is our motivation in setting an intention? Mm -hmm. What is our motivation? Are we doing it for someone else, or are we doing it for ourselves? Right. Okay. So it, that then that involves some introspection, does it not? It's a little bit of self examination. Great. So and have developing an action plan toward taking that goal to taking that intention to the next step is is really important and what it helps to do is one of the things that most people seem to have an infection of and that's procrastination. Mm. <laughs> uh, any procrastination uh, genes in here? You know, at some point in my life I was surely a procrastinator mm -hmm. but as I got older I think I figured out that the earlier that I do something the easier it is on me in the long run. Well, I'm glad you figured that out as uh, at my stage in life. I'm sure that when I get to the Procrastinators Hall of Fame, there'll be a statue of <laughs> <laughs> myself, front side. So, it might be tomorrow. <laughs> it could be tomorrow. I'll, I'll get there sometime. I don't know when it's open, to tell you the truth. So I hope that you enjoyed today's podcast. I hope that you take that <clears throat> instructions on the intentions and incorporate them into your life. And as always, we give a free prescription at the end of every podcast. We ask you to 
Take some fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Unplug your television and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we ask that you for fish without bait. Do your kindness for yourself. Do a kindness for another. Forgive yourself. Forgive another. Namaste. Namaste. Have a good day.